Hello. Back in 2017, I released DIY BMS version 3. Um, that was really popular, and people have been running those for over 12 months. Uh, but today, I'd like to introduce you to DIY BMS version 4. Um, let's take a look. Before we jump to version 4, let's take a look at the issues with version 3. The boards have been really popular and uh, work very well, but a lot of people have had issues with the provisioning of the boards, especially getting the I2C connections working and confusion on the, what uh, pull-up resistors to use. The uh, cost of the ADUM isolator chip is also quite high, um, and some retailers have been selling those for nearly £5. The uh, at Tiny 85 chip didn't really have enough input-output pins. It was originally picked for its physical size and costs to make a nice small uh, PCB, uh, but then this limited the ability to do um, extra functions and with the, with the uh, module. Um, the power consumption of each model, module is uh, pretty high as well. Um, it's not really a problem if you're running a large power bank, uh, but it could be for smaller power bank installations. Um, we'll have a look at that uh, in a bit more detail in a moment. Finally, the modules only work when connected to a controller. Uh, so without the controller, the modules go into a panic mode and just flash the red, red LED to tell you that, um, that they're in trouble. Uh, but they also stop balancing at that point. Um, I could have fixed this through the code, um, but I didn't really feel it would be worth, worth a while uh, whilst the power consumption issues remain, and there wasn't really a way of fixing that without hardware changes. Okay, here's my uh, DIY BMS version 4 uh, test environment. Um, it's purely a piece of wood with uh, four modules, uh, the controller and its uh, new PCB um, and also something really new for version 4 is the ability to, to control an external relay board. Um, you can see here I've got four cells in series, uh, one parallel, um, gives a nominal voltage of about 15-16 volts and then four modules, one for each, each cell. Uh, this is a, an older type of um, a version 4 circuit board. I didn't stick with that design in the end, so I've gone for this, this smaller one here, and that's the version you'll see on, on GitHub now. Some uh, other changes that you'll see is that um, we don't use uh, I2C um, or I2C connections anymore. Um, we're actually using um, opto-isolated serial. Um, so the data comes, comes out of the controller into the first module, then into the second, into the third, and so on and so on, all the way back round to the, the start. Um, and the little um, opto isolators just, just hidden between the uh, connectors at the top of the board. The controller is still using the ESP8266. Um, I haven't moved to the 32-bit version. Um, this module uh, works perfectly all right. I, I have moved away from the uh, Node MCU ones and using the, uh, uh, the Wemos D1 size boards uh, just purely because they're smaller boards. Um, and then the circuit board is, that it plugs into uh, just gives you an easy access to use the uh, serial comms um, and it's also got a lot of inputs and outputs that we can use for it to, to drive other things like the relay board. The other new feature with DIY BMS is a brand new uh, web interface. Um, so on the screen now you can see uh, the four cell modules that we've got in a graph view. Um, we've also got these little icons here that tell you the highest and lowest points that each cell has gone to. Um, that's only transient, it only, only lasts until you can reset the, the uh, controller. Um, on the bottom um, uh, the graph you've also got uh, the current board temperature uh, you can see most of these are 24 25 degrees um, and also if, the, if you've got an external sensor plugged in um, you, you, you can see that um, as well um, so at the top uh, you've got the total voltage and uh, that's actually just adding up, adding up all the four cells um, and also the range so the range is basically the difference between the highest and the lowest cell um, so generally you want that as low as possible and this little grey bar at the top left is the uh, sort of re page refresh indicator. So every time that, that hits the bottom um, on the left, it refreshes the page. On the modules tab, um, you can see that it loads up all the modules that are connected. Um, you can have uh, various bank configurations in this. Um, I'll do another video with regards to the actual config on it. Um, most people will probably only ever have um, a single bank and that takes up to 16 cells. Um, so for most people, that's probably what they're, they're gonna have. Theoretically, with version four, um, you can have up to 64 different modules. Um, and again, it's got a, a graphical, uh, sorry, a, a tabular version of the, uh, the graph. Um, so you can see the cell, current cell voltages, uh, the minimum and maximum, and also the temperatures as well. Um, 
you've got this identify button so if you click on one of those it will actually uh, flash the LED on the module um, so you can track it down and find out which is which and you can also click the configure button um, so if we look at that um, it actually needs two clicks so the first click will actually query the module and the second click shows you the, the display on screen now the settings down here uh, basically allow you to change the uh, values um, on the calibration of it um, and things like the, um, the thermistor uh, coefficients um, one of the important ones is the temperature that you allow the board to, to go to during uh, the bypass mode um, so what that happens this time which didn't happen on the previous version uh, we use PWM control to actually uh, increase and decrease the uh, the load resistance and the load um, values um, based on temperature so if, if the board gets too hot we, we switch off the load resistor and, and let it back off and sort of pulse the, uh, the current through um, so you've got uh, individual control on a per cell basis so you can set, set a maximum temperature of 70 degrees and also the, the cell um, maximum bypass voltage you can also do it in this global settings down the bottom to so every single board in one, in one click save having to go through um, and you notice whenever you click the save settings you get a green banner across the top Additionally, um, when you can actually set up each of these, these cells, um, you can actually type in what you're actually measuring the voltage to be. So if we, for instance, we did this one that actually came out to be 4.1 um, instead of the 4064 that it's currently got, you can click the calculate button on there and it will recalculate the calibration multiplier um, to be the right value. You can save those, those away. Um, the other values you're probably not going to change, um, that they should be fairly constant for, for uh, the boards. We've also got on the integration tab uh, the same features as we had before um, with the influx DB. Um, so again, you can set up your uh, IP addresses and server names and things like that and users, users and passwords and save those through. And then every 20 or 30 seconds, the uh, uh, DIY BMS will transmit the values over there and basically give you the, the cell dump of all the voltage, voltages and temperatures. Um, and you can also do the same data through MQTT so if you want to link this into uh, uh, the EMON or Open Energy Monitor um, products, you can. Um, this, will, this should also work with uh, Open Hub and things like that as well if you, if you want to log through that. And over on the settings, uh, so we've got loads of new options on, on here. Um, you've got the bank configuration, which again I'll run through um, in another time. You've got the ability to synchronize the time to um, use an NTP. Um, so at the minute um, that defaults to using the Google time um, and you can set your time zone offsets here as well and if, if you're using daylight saving or not. Um, we can reset any error counters but um, there aren't any at the moment. And finally the, the biggest difference um, that we've got here is the control of the relay board. So the way I've implemented this is the ability to have um, various rules that, that run um, which then allow you to uh, control if the relays are switched on or on or off. So we've got controls here for uh, timing durations. So you could have, um, for instance, you could have a, a relay to drive a, a fan during the day if it's particularly warm, or or even um, you could, if you had a, a power wall that was used to control lighting in the, in the night, um, you could charge up during, with solar during the day and then get this to switch on a light overnight. Um, you've got control over over voltage and under voltage as well. So again, you can drive relays to different states by that point of view. If an individual cell is going over a certain voltage, again, you can drive some different rules. Um, and again, if a, if a module reports a single cell over voltage, um, you can also do that, do that as well. Um, the uh, final one is the, the communications error. Um, so if I go in here now and disconnect a module, for instance, cell one, um, after a few seconds, we should get a uh, warning uh, that it can't actually talk to the modules anymore and it goes into an error mode and at that point you can actually get it to drive a, um, a, a relay to a certain state so it could be to power off all the inverters it might be to, to stop charging um, you'll also see that there's a packet error count that um, is going up now as well uh, so that, that basically keeps track of um, errors over, over a period of time and I'll just try and uh, plug that module back in and it should self recover And there we go, and the error's gone away. Um, so the, these two rules at the moment are in pink, which um, just highlights that they're actually act active. So I've got a, 
a time uh, based rule going on here um, but uh, again that's uh, save that for another another video uh, the about box just tells you some more background details and also links to the YouTube videos and the github code one of the other neat features um, of DIY BMS version 4 is the fact that you don't actually need to provision any modules um, it is just a case of plugging them in so if we uh, for instance take the uh, middle module module out. Um, that's just a case of uh, changing the cabling. Um, so that skips that one to that one. Um, you'll see obviously an error on the screen because there was a, a comms failure. But then it should refresh and just show you the three cells as um, we've now got, and they just carry on working normally. What you'll also notice is that the uh, cell we've just removed will actually go into um, a standby mode where the LED will do a double flash every eight seconds. Uh, and that's actually checking the, the, the cell voltage just as a normal module would. And it will also go into bypass if the uh, threshold is reached as well. Um, so even if the controller isn't running, you've, you've still got some basic functionality there. Well, that wraps up this video uh, on uh, DIY BMS version 4. I hope you enjoyed it. If you click subscribe, I'll make some further videos explaining how to configure and set up the boards and look in detail at the relay modules and the rules that you can put on them. On the screen now uh, and in the description below are the links to the GitHub source code files. And I've also set up a forum over at uh, Open Energy Monitor to discuss any issues or questions you may have. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.